Hi, I'm Darren and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. Well, I finished the teardown on my Heathkit DX60. How did it go? Let's have a look. In the first episode, I said that I'd be stripping the rig down to a bare chassis. Doing that kind of follows the assembly process in reverse order, especially for the stuff that went on first. It'll definitely not come off first. Some items like the meter and the power cord connection make sense to remove early on, so you can set them aside for protection or to get better access to other stuff. Next comes the wholesale removal of the components that I'm not going to save, like the electrolytic capacitors and power supply diodes. No reason to bother desoldering them, just cut them and toss them aside. There are some items, like this rotary switch for example, where you do have to go more cautiously and desolder the connections. Cutting this heavy gauge wire could induce a shock into the delicate contacts, which is not a good idea. Some items come off as sub-assemblies, like the low pass filter. And naturally there's going to be some surprises pop up as you tear into a rig in this condition. Here it looks like something in the filter overheated. Need to take a closer look at that later. It didn't take long at all to get it stripped down to the point where I could pull out the wiring harness. Some of the original lacing had broken, so I put several wire ties on it just to keep it together. The final items to remove are these dried out rubber grommets. They're not that difficult to pop back out. And with that, I've got a bare chassis ready to be cleaned and refinished. Okay, so in case you were curious, this is what a Heathkit DX60 looks like all blown apart. <laughs> Um, I found a few more things as I went through the teardown here. Uh, nothing that I think is fatal, it just adds more work to the scope uh, that I have to do to get it back to working again. And right now I'd say I'm feeling a little bit like that uh, riddle of how do you eat an elephant? And the answer to that riddle is yeah, just one bite at a time. I just have a lot more bites now. To consider. So let's start with looking a little more closely at the filter. So something bad happened in here. Let's try to get it a little more on camera. It's a deep uh, case that it's in and the light just won't get down in there. But there's three areas that are scorched and I can't imagine what ordinarily would have created an overload so bad that you'd start scorching this filter. But nonetheless something did go awry in there. And this cap clearly doesn't look like an original so I'm gonna have to spend some time to troubleshoot this and hopefully that there's nothing really wrong with it. Next up is the loading coil and now that I've got it out of the rig I can get a better look at the I guess the front of it here and yeah something amiss either happened here um, meaning it overheated or that there was some kind of hack job modification here worst case it took an entire turn out of it so this really does have me concerned I'm going to have to find some reference photos of what this is supposed to look like. Um, worst case, I might have to rebuild this whole thing. I hope I don't get into that uh, level of, of repair. I'm, uh, I might have to rebuild the front end of it. In other words, just rewind this section if there are turns missing and just come up with a way to support it. Or third option is, and I don't really want to go down this route, I'll have to find a donor rig for this item or scrounge the internet and try to find one that came out of a donor rig. But this is a little depressing now that I'm really looking at it to see just how much damage there is here and how unique a part it is and how complicated it might be to get it fixed. Next up is the function switch. And now that I've gotten out of the rig, I can see just how badly damaged it is. And it's definitely trashed. Uh, and I'll try to get my other camera, my Sony, that takes better close-ups here to really zoom in on it. But you can see where the contacts are just eroded and um, no longer there. The metal's just gone. And then the moving contacts and the moving wipers are just uh, bent on this one side. So this guy is definitely not going to work anymore. As far as everything else goes, one of the things I did here during the teardown was to check some of the resistors. And I measured about a dozen or so of them and at least two-thirds of them were out of spec. So what I decided to do is just cut them as I went through. And that actually makes removing the terminal strips easier because I didn't have to do much desoldering of them inside of the chassis where it's tough to get access. Uh, I just needed to cut them and get them isolated. And similarly with the tube sockets, uh, 
able to get those out easier by just cutting the resistors. Now I left the caps intact because they're more than likely okay except for the electrolytics and there's a few film caps floating around here. They're just going to get thrown out anyway but that made it easier to get these out and of course having these out of the chassis I could put them in my uh, little vise and desolder them out in free space so much easier. So that'll make salvaging them okay. I pointed briefly to this pile back here that has the electrolytic caps in it. That's my discard pile. One thing I've learned of working on these old rigs over the years is even if you find parts that you're just going to toss, don't throw them out right away. Hold on to them until you're done with the project. Because Sometimes you may need something as simple as a dimension that you can measure off the old part to help you figure out how to package in a replacement. So it's just a uh, good practice to hold on to all the stuff even if it's just trash. The front panel is not in too bad a shape. I know I'm kind of reflecting my big light off of it here, but you can see it's got some dirt on it, some grease and some worn areas, but I think just a quick bath and some automotive car wash solution, that's typically what I use on these um, graphics panels, at least the ones that have permanent paint that aren't going to be damaged by water, just to do a mild cleaning on it, and that generally will suffice. And I can't forget the wire harness. So I was able to get it out largely intact. I just cut all the connections very close to where their terminations were. And I think I'm going to be able to lay this out on a piece of plywood and make a new one fairly easily just using this as a template. It's not very complicated. I pulled the end caps off the transformer and as I feared, the rust is actually inside the transformer, not just on the perimeter of the, the laminates and it's actually a bit concerning here on this side where all the wires um, all the leads are coming out of the, uh, the core in fact the rust is got to the point where this laminate here is actually sticking up above the stack in fact the, I think the one below it is actually doing the same thing too so this is definitely a bit concerning um, what I'm going to try to do here is remove as much of this as I can manually. Um, I'm going to use a wire brush and get it off the inside surface of the laminates here and do the same thing around the perimeter to get rid of the, the rust that's around the outside. Um, and I'll use the wire brush in the direction of the laminates to, so that I don't try to spread them apart any further. Then I'm going to use a tried and true method for dealing with rust. Just use some navel jelly to convert the iron oxides into iron phosphates, which are or aren't iron phosphide, I forget which it is. Uh, but nonetheless, that's more stable than iron oxides and should help um, arrest it from getting any worse. There is a risk here that this has already done some damage to uh, the laminations to the point where there'll be higher eddy currents than normal, and this might lead to the transformer running hotter. But if you look at the ratio of just how much is suspect here to the overall stack might be okay but definitely want to address the rust issue on top of it all on top of it all I should say I got to be careful with the wire leads coming out there's no solder joints right here there's either solder joints or crimps um, buried inside of the uh, the wrappings here and I don't want to flex these wires around so much that I break one of those joints because that would create a whole nother can of worms so I'll just be careful as I'm doing those steps. And the last thing I gotta do is deal with the amount of rust that's on the inside of the end caps. But as bad as this looks, this is actually easy to remedy. Uh, I can wire brush that off and soak these in um, either phosphoric acid or evapor rust overnight and then have a good surface for painting. And that'll be the end game here. Uh, I'll paint this after I get the rust taken care of and put it back together. All right, it's about 24 hours later, and I've completed all of the prep work on the transformer, and I'm cautiously feeling like I may have turned the corner on this project, you know, done with the teardown and finding all the, uh, the horrible bad news here and actually making some progress to getting it working again. So let me go over the things that I've done here. The most vis visibly obvious is the improvement on these two end caps. Um, this took a lot of wire brushing. A couple of soaks in evaporust to neutralize and start to dissolve the really stubborn um, oxides that were on there. And it looks much, much better. There's definitely a lot of pitting. That's what's going to happen, of course, on steel when it gets heavily rusted. But I don't care. This is inside of the transformer. You know, the outside of the uh, end caps look just fine. Um, they're starting to flash rust a little bit. That's no big deal. I'm going to prime and paint 
the insides of these separate before I put them back on the transformer, so they should be good. Um, the transformer itself uh, turned out pretty decent. I mean, there's only so much you can do with something that's as bad a shape, and for sure, when you're working on something like this, you don't want to do more harm than good trying to fix everything that's wrong with it. So that's where I kept my uh, uh, that's where I kept my approach while I was working on this. So what I was able to get the majority of the actual degraded laminate, because that's really what I think happened down in this area. There's just a portion of that uh, particular laminate there that just rusted away. I don't know, this might have been soaked in water at one point to get that much corrosion, but getting that out of there wasn't too terribly difficult. I just used a thin bladed tool and very carefully pry up the laminates and kind of scrape that out. And now what's left when I put the end caps back on, maybe you can see it here as I compress this, is going to compress flat. So I've got almost all of that loose rust out of there. And again, it's only a couple of laminates on the whole stack, so hopefully that's not enough to hurt the performance. And it's barely shedding, hold it up here, it's barely shedding any rust particles now. Um, I did apply the uh, navel jelly to it after I cleaned the rust off there. And of course, around the laminate stack, just using a stainless steel wire brush and going parallel with the laminates took the vast majority of that off. And this, I don't think, is that big of a deal. Even after I put a little bit of navel jelly on here because I didn't want to soak it and have it penetrate inside the stack, there's still some surface rust here, but I don't think that's going to be too harmful. I've gotten the majority of it off, and I'm going to prime and paint this anyway, so that should help. Um, the last couple of things, uh, the fasteners were in pretty tough shape, so those got soaked and uh, primed uh, at least the tops of the screws and the washers now of course there's fiber washers here uh, when you put the bolts in to clamp the two sides of the uh, transformer together with the outside covers you don't want to have an electrical connection between one side of the stack to the other because these are effectively insulated from each other so that's why there's fiber washers there they're a little tough shape but i think they'll be okay and then lastly these two pieces of fish paper uh, they're put in here it's an additional layer of insulation over the bends as the windings come out of the transformer. Yeah, there's a lot of rust stuck on there. I tried scraping off as much of it as I could. I had more fish paper laying around. I just replaced them. And you could probably replace this with Nomex nowadays or Mylar. It would work just fine. But other than looking a little cruddy, I'll, I think they'll, they'll work okay and get it put back together. So like I say, next step, get these primed. Uh, I'll work on getting the transformer outside primed and painted as well. And here's what the end caps look like after painting. Much better. The pitting does telegraph through, but obviously those are hidden surfaces and the whole point of the paint is just corrosion protection. Now for the trickiest part, getting the 10 transformer wires carefully routed through the bottom end cap. I imagine these were longer and taped together at the transformer factory. No such luxury here, I gotta just go carefully and use my long needle nose pliers to help them along. After that comes the two pieces of fish paper, then the top end cap, and then finally the four long screws. These of course need to be inserted with the nuts on the bottom end cap so that the extra length can be used to secure the transformer to the chassis. Before I paint it, I'll take the time to strip fresh ends on the leads that need them, plus I'll retin all ten wires. Lastly, I'm doing a quick resistance reading on the primary and four secondary windings just to make sure nothing has gone open circuit. Everything checks out fine, so on to final paint. And here it is after painting. What a major improvement. It looks brand new. I certainly could have done these repairs to the transformer later on in the project, but I really wanted a win right now given all the other major challenges ahead. So I'm going to enjoy this little moment. You might have noticed when I was showing off the finished transformer that I've also finished the prep work on the chassis. I've gotten it clean. I've taken off the rust and treated and sanded uh, all the rust areas. So it's ready for the finish that I'm going to put on it. And I'm facing a bit of an important decision here. There isn't an obvious clear choice of what to do with an old metal chassis that's got a plating on it. In this case, I think it's zinc plating. So I will be talking in the next episode about the options that I considered and ultimately the one that I picked and decided to go forward with. So I do hope you're enjoying this material on this Heathkit DX60. And as always, I do hope you're enjoying the material I have here on my channel. So until next time, bye for now.